So the first thing we're going to have to do is really just introduce this synth. And I should really stop calling it a synth because it's, it's more of an instrument with a whole bunch of little synthesizers inside of it. Okay? So kick me if I keep calling it a synth. But this instrument, we kind of had to introduce it before getting too deep into each section. Because staring at it, it looks very complex and indeed it can be. So the first place we're going to start is this voice programmer. This is this whole section right here. The section of this instrument that controls how the playback happens. What you have here in the middle first is the sound blocks. Each of these contain four cells. As you can see, there are eight sound blocks. Eight times four is 32. You can some way think of this as a 32 step sequencer as well because the cells are controlled by the voice modes and the progress modes. For instance, if I hit a note, it consecutively triggers through the sound block. But it can trigger in multiple different ways depending on how you set this. You can even do things like separate the synth to play all the cells at one time, creating a much more fat, interesting sound, or set up different zones, or play it in mono or unison mode. Lots of different controls. As we go down further, you have the morph controls, and this allows you to do really interesting things between blending between the different cells and the different sound blocks. Below that is the soundbar section. These are essentially all your different synthesizers of which there are 16 individual synthesizers. Eight analog, eight digital. Don't forget about the control section and the effects section tucked away in here. The control is basically all your macros and a lot of control over those macros depending on which synthesizer you're actually using. It also contains your MIDI control if you want to assign pitch bend mod wheel or the remote octave, which we'll discuss later. Effects, you have a simple delay and reverb I shouldn't call them simple because they're really quite amazing, actually. If we come back out of that mode, the next section is really the synth engine panel. And this is where things get fun. Again, you have eight different synthesizers per engine. On the one hand, you have an analog engine that's based off a classic analog hardware synth. Native Instruments doesn't say which one, but essentially, I would believe that this is a Jupiter 8. So we all know that the Jupiter 8 is one of the kings of the amazing analog synths from the 80s. And for good reason. It did a lot of good stuff. And why Rounds is very similar to it is in the architecture of the oscillator. A couple different oscillator shapes. The fact that it does cross-modulation between the oscillators. The fact that it does sync between the oscillators and has a sub-oscillator, both one and two octaves. The other thing that's very interesting is with the Jupiter 8, you could layer and split very easily, which we just saw. We can layer multiple cells, and we can actually split this into different zones depending on where I hit it on the octave of the keyboard will trigger a different zone. So you can essentially have different synthesizers at different parts of the octave of the keyboard. On the digital side of things, we have a digital synth that utilizes frequency modulation, FM synthesis, as it's sometimes referred to. And this is really a simple, that is the key word here, simple, three operator design. FM synthesis can be terribly complex, but you don't have a lot of controls, you don't have a lot of oscillators to worry about here. So it makes it kind of easy to dial in a sound quite quickly. So that's mainly what you need to know about the synth and first thing we're going to do is get into it and create an initial patch like I have here so we can strip it down to the very basics and start learning this thing. <laughs> 